Hi, I'm Quentin Young. <laughs> and this is Second Story Garage, here with Nick Moss Thank and you. Michael Ledbetter from Nick Moss, Nick Moss Band. Thanks for a lot for coming in. Uh, you're on the road now. You're from Chicago, but you're on the road now. Uh, tell me a little bit about where you've been and what you've done uh, in the last several weeks. We've been, uh, we've been everywhere. Here, there, everywhere. Does um, anywhere stand out? Well, this place, because we got slapped in the face with the cold weather. <laughs> you picked the worst time in the last probably since 1919 well, to come from, to Colorado. We're from Chicago, so we're not adverse to the cold weather, but it's just we came straight out of California on this tour, and it was like, you know, hey, hey, and then someone tapped you on the shoulder, and you just got sucker punched when you turn around, so. Yeah, yeah. It's even cold for us out here. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> you, for much of your career, uh, played for other folks. You were in the legendary blues band, yeah. which a lot of people will know from uh, the Blues Brothers. And uh, I I read that it was actually Willie Smith, the drummer, the leader of that band, yep. who got you to play guitar. Is that correct? Because you, you were playing bass with that band, and he... He was the one to give me the opportunity to switch over from bass to guitar. I had, I had been, you know, fooling around with it, and the guitar player that was in the band at the time, Willie Greeson, great guitar player, he, he had the, some family... Uh, problems that he had to deal with and you know uh, and so I guess Willie just felt it was easier to have me switch over to guitar and teach a bass player than have to teach a guitar player all this stuff mm -hmm. had he heard you and maybe heard something some yeah you know well occasionally the, the guitar player and, I, and myself would switch up you know during the night not a lot but every now and then you, you know Willie would go hey man you want to play guitar I'll play bass and we'd switch up and mm -hmm. So that's you know. So Willie knew I could handle it. Usually, you hear it going the other way around. You have a guitarist, and yeah. and and a, and a band needs a bassist, and, and yeah. there you are. You start playing bass. Uh, and then Michael, we were just talking. You actually uh, were in opera for yeah, a while. That's correct. Um, and and Chicago. And uh, how does uh, how does that tr what what do you do in opera end in kind of more like soul and blues thing that you do? now with with nick what's what's the same what's what's the common denominator there's really i i know i know they seem like the opposite the opposite spectrum but anytime i sang classical music or or all of the singers that i loved in in, in opera i loved the ones that expressed themselves the most that used the most emotion and that's what i try to do on stage whether i was singing opera or whether I'm singing blues and soul and you know and rock music, mm -hmm. it's all about expression and emotion and bringing everything that you can mm -hmm. out into it. So I mean, singing blues and singing, you know, classical music. Yeah, you gotta. There, there there's some differences here and there, but it all comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. So the common thing is the soul. Right. Them, right. Yeah. It's yeah. it's all <laughs> it's all soul music really. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing uh, we were just talking about is that Colorado, you kind of have a connection to Colorado and that um, it was in Colorado you got your first gig outside of Chicago. Uh, in, well, in, yeah, in yeah, under my own name. You know, mm -hmm. I'd been touring for years with, you know, a lot of the older uh, blues greats in Chicago, but when I finally ventured out on my own, um, Brendan's Pub in, in, in Denver, great downtown, Kevin Garrity was the first guy to ever give me you know, I called him up and said, hey, Brendan, uh, or Kevin, excuse me, uh, I just recorded my very first CD, man. He said, great, when are you coming out? And uh, he put, you know, put together two nights at his club, called a bunch of his friends along the front range, got me some other gigs, called some guys up in the hills and the ski resort towns, got me some gigs up there, and pretty soon I had like a 10 or 11 day run and he, off one phone call. And he knew you from the legendary He knew band. me from that and from Jimmy Rogers band, playing with Jimmy Rogers, because uh -huh. that was, from legendary, I moved on to Jimmy Rogers band. and mm -hmm. So, he, you know, he was pretty instrumental in, in, in helping me, like, actually, you know, that's how, I did my very first tour. That's how I learned how to, you know, be a band leader and tour, man, mm -hmm. coming out here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, released in March, uh, Time Ain't Free. That's your on tour supporting mm -hmm. yeah. that right now. But today we heard three brand new tunes, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we've um, been uh, we've been doing the songs from Time Ain't Free for almost two years. Right. I mean, it came right. out in March, but, right. you know, recorded and 
and, and writ, wrote most of those songs almost two years ago. So mm -hmm. we've been doing some new material. We thought you guys would like it. Yeah, uh, I especially like listening to um, Shade Tree. Or Shade Trees, is it? Yeah, Shade Tree. Uh, with Michael's voice is beautiful on that. And you you told a really interesting story about where that came from. Can you can you repeat that for yeah, us? Yeah, I was... Uh, well, anyone that's up on their current affairs, watching the you know the news and seeing stuff, I was watching the. I try to stay away from this stuff, but every now and then it sneaks past me, and, and I saw all the stuff that was going on in Ferguson and down near St. Louis, and uh, I happened to read something in the Washington Post. Excuse me, <clears throat> the Washington Post, and I wish I could remember the name of the reporter that wrote it. I feel bad, uh, but. He was just saying how, historically speaking, that St. Louis has never had er, anything like that uh, as far as riots and, and that kind of racial tension. There's always been some type of racial tension, but nothing that volatile. Mm -hmm. uh, and he used a quote from Dick Gregory, and someone had asked Dick Gregory years ago, you know, why, why in St. Louis haven't, have, have, hasn't there been something you know, really big. When every major city in America has, over the years has had racial riots and racial tensions and stuff. And his answer was, because we have shade trees. And I thought that was really interesting. I've done a lot of touring in the South over the years, and it really doesn't take much to figure it out, but some people, you know, you got to explain it to them. People in the South, they get it right away. They, they understand, and, uh, you know, Unfortunately, though, the article closes with the shade trees didn't work this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just it, the, the song just came to me as, it, right as I finished the last sentence of that article. The stuff just started coming to my head, man. I just started writing it down and hmm. had written the song that night and tried it out on my wife, and she cried. <laughs> so, yeah. like, is it that bad? <laughs> <laughs> right. That that could that could cut either way. Yeah. Somebody cry. She said, "Oh, was that good?" And I was like, "Oh, cool." And then tried try it with the boys. I let Michael have it because there's no way I could sing it. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of Michael on that? That's that's just terrible. I wish he would do a good job. Uh, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying. No just man. He's, better. Uh, he's speaking of soul. He <laughs> does. You know. He does. Uh, you know. The brunt of the singing nightly because I don't really care to hear myself sing too often. I know like, I got a lot, a lot of people say, oh, man, I love the way you sing. And, and you know, that's great. But next to him, I'd rather listen to him sing. <laughs> do, do you find yourself, like, with a new song like that, writing with Michael in mind? Do, do you hear him? This is, this is new for me since Michael's been in the band. I've always written songs for me, and I've always written songs that I could handle. Um, last, the, uh, on Time Mate Free, I wrote one specific song for Michael that he that he sang on the album and uh, but we wrote songs kind of together we yeah. collaborated and so that was even new for me too I've never really done that I've always been of the opinion that someone should probably I think a song is always more believable when it comes from the person that's delivering it mm. uh, there are uh, uh, you know except you know exceptions to the rule um, and I think it just has to be that the song has to be exceptional for the for the rule to be broken, mm -hmm. and I'm not like, trying to say sometimes that. I it's song, the, yeah. Sometimes it's the performer who has to be exceptional too. Right? Yes, I, I, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the delivery own. has to be believable, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think the person yeah obviously has to believe the song. And I, you know, I let him listen to it and read it first. It was up to him if he wanted to do it. What did you What did you think when you first heard it or read it? Well, I thought it was a fantastic song. <laughs> you know, I just, I was just trying to, pretty much every night I just tried to, because he, 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 brought, he brought the song to me and said, hey, I have this in mind, you know. I have just, you know, maybe you can do this or do that. And that's what I try to do every night, you know, because the song is his creation in his head, and I'm just hoping that I'm doing, you know, right by the song. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, bringing my own thing to it and, you know, like I said before, feeling it my own self. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, if you listen to the words of that song, it's not, it's not hard to, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty gun wrenching song. So, yeah, yeah. That's not hard to feel. Um, 
so this is all three of the songs that you play for us today are new stuff. When do you expect that stuff to be recorded and out where people can buy it? Well, we're going to be starting probably recording very soon here. Okay. You know, this is, Sometime this is, this in is our 2015? Last, yeah, this is our last major tour of the year. Okay. You know, and, and then you're getting back into... Yeah, we'll be home for... Stuff. We're going to be home for quite some time and just doing some local stuff and chilling. Michael's just had a brand new baby. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Boy or girl? Girl. What's your name? Holland. Holland. Beautiful. Yeah. Holland Simone. Holland Simone. Hi, Holland. Hi, Holland. Nice well, baby. thank you so much for coming in and playing with, for us today. It was well, really fun to listen us, to. Man. Yeah, appreciate it. you got it. Thank you. Really fun to listen thank to. Thank you. Watch yeah. these videos. You heard it here first. Brand new songs. Nick Moss Band. This is Second Story Garage. Thank you. <laughs>